I've played a lot of roller coaster related video games in my time. You've probably heard of some of them, and some you've probably never heard of. With all of the hundreds of hours I've spent playing these games, I think I'm more than qualified to determine which ones are worth playing and which ones aren't. First, I'll explain my ranking system. If you want to skip this, skip to this part of the video. I'll be ranking these games on four main categories. The first category is the coaster builder. This is the most important category to me as a coaster enthusiast, because it determines how quickly and how accurately I can build the roller coaster. The next category is realism. This is how accurate the rides in the game are to their real life counterparts, or if the rides in the game could even exist in real life. Next is optimization. This is how well the game runs, and if it can run at all on older hardware. The final category is price. I determine this by how much content and playtime you can get from the game compared to its price tag. Once the scores of the individual categories are added up, we have the overall score of the game. The first game I'll be ranking is Roller Coaster Tycoon. Released in March of 1999, this is the first roller coaster game I've ever played, and it still holds up today. This game was a passion project by developer Chris Sawyer and his shows. The game is overflowing with personality and with style. As far as I know, this is the oldest roller coaster builder in a game. There's nothing necessarily wrong with it, and it does its job fine, but it lacks greatly when compared to games like Planet Coaster and No Limits. The ability to customize the size and the length of the track sections is very limited, and it feels like you're using a cookie cutter at times. For this, I'll be ranking the coaster builder 6 out of 10. When it comes to realism, this game does a great job. Every ride I can think of has its own real-life counterpart that it's based on. All of the coaster models are inspired by real-life rides, and most of them exist in the real world. Roller Coaster Tycoon gets a perfect score in this category, 10 out of 10. As for optimization, Roller Coaster Tycoon sets a perfect example. It had no problems running on computers back in 1999, and still has no problem today. You could run this game on almost any system and have a flawless experience, 10 out of 10. Finally, we have the price. You can find this game for $6 on Steam, and for as little as $1.49 on GOG.com. You could probably find copies of the game for even less at garage sales. For the amount of content this game has, a couple dollars is a great deal. 10 out of 10 price. With all the scores added up, Roller Coaster Tycoon gets a 9 out of 10. This puts the game in the A rating, and I highly recommend playing it. The next game I'll be rating is Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. It's essentially the same game as the first, but with added features and new content. The main difference is the price, where it's nearly double the price of the first game. Due to this, I'll be deducting one point from the price category, but keeping the rest of the scores the same. This gives Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 a score of 8.75 out of 10. This lands it into the B rating, but it's still a great game, and I definitely recommend it. The next game is Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. It's the third game in the series, and it's the last decent one in my opinion. When the game first released, it was incredible, and it introduced many people to the franchise. The expansion packs added lots of new features, like zoos and water slides, to the game. This meant the game was filled with content and had much more than just roller coasters. You could create amusement parks, water parks, zoos, and whatever your imagination held. The developers, Frontier Games, knew what they were doing and did a great job. In my opinion, the problems with the game arose from the publisher, Atari, but I'll get into that later. In terms of realism, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 does a good job. All of the coaster types are based on real-life attractions or real-life ride concepts. The only problem is that some of these concepts have never seen the light of day, and many of the rides, even the flat rides, come with non-removable theming. This causes problems if you're trying to recreate a certain ride, and it also causes rides to look out of place in some cases. Due to this, I'm giving RCT3 a score of 7 out of 10 in realism. RCT3 uses the same coaster builder as the previous two games, and it feels the same too. I'll be giving it the same score, 6 out of 10. In terms of optimization, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 is a strange case. The game used to run fine, but it can hardly run on newer systems, and often crashes for me. The game can't run in HD, and hardly works on modern PCs. Instead of fixing their game and updating it, Atari re-released the whole game on Steam as Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Complete Edition. This game runs better on modern systems and can run in high resolutions, but owners of the old game have to buy it again. Because of this, I'll be ranking Complete Edition separately from RCT3 Platinum. Complete Edition runs fine, but for those who aren't willing to pay $20 for a game they already own, there's not much you can do. The game is barely playable at times, but is still playable nonetheless. I'm giving Roller Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, a 4 out of 10 in optimization due to the low resolutions and constant game crashes. Finally, we have the price. Although you can't buy the original Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Platinum on Steam anymore, it has historically sold for around $20 throughout its lifetime. This is including the Wild and Soaked expansion packs, which I consider a pretty good deal for the amount of content. This game might not have the largest campaign, but $20 is not a bad price at all, with all the added content. I'm giving Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Platinum a score of 9 out of 10 in price. I'm deducting 1 point due to the short campaign. With all the scores added up, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 gets a 6.5 out of 10. This lands it into the D rating, but it still isn't the worst. I wouldn't recommend it these days, but if you have it saved on an old laptop, it could still provide some fun. 
Now for Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Classic Edition. I will be keeping the realism and Coaster Builder scores the same since it's pretty much the same game. However, as I said before, this game runs much better on newer systems. I'll be giving the optimization a score of 10 out of 10. The price, on the other hand, is also perfect. I find it unbelievable that you have to buy the game again to get a good experience. I've already paid $20 for RCT3 Platinum, and I'm not paying another $20 for Classic Edition. The game just isn't worth $40, and it feels like a cash grab when they could have just updated the original game. For this, I'm giving the price a score of 4 out of 10. With all of the scores added up, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Classic Edition gets an overall score of 6.75 out of 10. This lands it into the D rating, and although it's better than RCT3 Platinum, it isn't perfect. I'd only recommend it if you haven't played it before. The next game is Roller Coaster Tycoon World. In my opinion, this game was the fall of the Roller Coaster Tycoon series. Every game after this one was just a cash grab mobile game based around microtransactions, all of which I'll be putting below the F rating. None of these mobile games are even worth trying, but back to the game at hand. This game switched developers multiple times, but the one it ended up with was Invisio Creations. They don't have many games underneath their belt, and appear inexperienced when it comes to game development. I'm not sure why Atari chose them for their next generation RCT game, but I assume it was because they were the cheaper option. I only bring this up because the majority of the game's problems could easily be blamed on the development team. This game has more than a handful of problems, and a lot of it could be due to a poor team of developers. It's buggy, ugly to look at, has no style, and it's generally not a fun game to be playing. Before we go into more detail, let's get into the categories. First, we have the Coaster Builder. Surprisingly, I think this is the game's standout feature. This Coaster Builder uses a node-based system, similar to No Limits. I think this is the future of Coaster Builders, and it would theoretically create smoother coasters and would prevent unpleasant transitions between track sections. The problem is that this system is a little too complex for most people playing the game, and it doesn't have as many tools to help, unlike No Limits. This means that even if you're trying to create a realistic coaster, you're going to have a difficult time, and it will likely look like a mess. For this, I'll be giving the Coaster Builder a score of 8 out of 10. It's a surprisingly good feature, but the execution isn't the best. Next, for realism, let me just say it isn't good. The game has a couple basic coaster types. It has a B&M dive coaster, floorless coaster, inverted coaster, and wing coaster. It also has an intimate accelerator and a wooden coaster. These coasters don't have the best looking trains or models, but they look passable. The only problem is there aren't any other coaster types. If you want something other than a B&M or a wooden coaster or an accelerator, you're out of luck. There's little to no variety in the coaster types, and realism gets worse when it comes to the flat rides. Like I said before with RCT3, these flat rides have non-removable theming. But that's not the main problem. The biggest problem is they just look ridiculous. It feels like whoever designed this has never been to an amusement park. I don't know if these rides have inspirations behind them, but I struggle to see them existing in real life. They lack customization, realism, and they just look silly. These feel like if you showed an AI a picture of a thrill ride and asked it to generate more. There's hardly anything realistic about these flat rides, so I'll be giving realism a score of 5 out of 10. Next, we have optimization. I remember playing this game when it first came out, and it was one of the buggiest games I've ever played. Peeps walking in straight lines, pathways disappearing, and much more. That doesn't sound like a big issue, since the game was released 6 years ago, but the game has hasn't been updated in years. It received one or two updates after release, and then it was abandoned by Invisio and Atari. Even if you buy this game today, you'll receive a buggy, unoptimized mess. Optimization gets a score of 4 out of 10. It's bad, but not awful. Finally, we have the price. Roller Coaster Tycoon World is $15 on Steam. This game isn't filled with content, and you probably won't get more than 20 hours out of it, like me, but it still isn't a horrible deal. I think a price of $10 to $12 would be a more reasonable price for the amount of content, but $15 still isn't that bad. I'm giving the price a score of 8 out of 10. This gives Roller Coaster Tycoon World an overall score of 6.25 out of 10. This puts it into the D rating. It's not a very good game, but it has a couple redeeming qualities. I wouldn't recommend it unless you understand what you're getting yourself into. The next game is Planet Coaster. If you can't tell from the amount of time I played this game, I really like this game. It essentially does everything right that Roller Coaster Tycoon World does wrong. It's polished, has a nice style, and it's fun to play. This game was developed by Frontier, the same developers from Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, but thankfully, this time there's no involvement from Atari. Unlike the Atari games, this game got regular updates for a couple years and is extremely polished compared to the rest. Unlike the developers from Roller Coaster Tycoon World, you can tell that these developers were passionate about what they were doing because it really shows in their work. Their passion for the game is contagious, and everything from the art style to the soundtrack just makes this game a joy to be playing. Now let's get into the categories before I go into more detail. Let's start with a coaster builder. It tried something new, like Roller Coaster Tycoon World, and I think it succeeded to some degree. This coaster builder isn't perfect, but there's a lot it does right. For one, it's simple to learn and easy to use. I think that's where a lot of other coaster builders fail. It has the simplicity of older games, but it also gives you more options and allows you to customize the coaster to a pretty good degree. It's clear that a lot of time and effort was put into this coaster builder, but it doesn't come without its downsides. The biggest downside to this coaster builder is how it handles transitions. For some reason, this coaster builder makes transitioning between tracks 
sections very rough and unpleasant, unless you place hundreds of six foot long track sections. This makes some sections of the coaster look unnatural and unpleasant, and there are even memes criticizing this online. Even though it's a little annoying, it can pretty easily be overlooked. This coaster builder has a lot of good qualities, and a couple negatives, which is why I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. As for realism, Planet Coaster does a great job. Every coaster model and every ride has a clear inspiration that it was modeled after, and all of these exist in real life. All theming is completely optional and can only be added through scenery. This means ride recreations and park recreations are easier to make, and you're able to stay faithful to the real life counterparts. The only problem I have with realism in Planet Coaster is the way they differentiate coaster types. For example, there's two different types of wing coasters in the game, one that uses a lift hill and one that uses a launch. This could easily just be one coaster type. They have the same track, they have the same trains. The only thing different is one has a launch and one has a lift hill. This could easily just be one coaster type with the option for a launch or a lift hill instead of being forced to use one or the other. I have a feeling they might have done this to make it seem like they have more coaster types than they do, which is a shame because they have a lot to be proud of. This problem isn't exclusive to wing coasters either. In real life, there's a launched hybrid coaster, but in the game, you can't have a launched hybrid coaster without using mods. This can be really troublesome and annoying for users who don't know what they're doing when it comes to mods. I don't know why Frontier Games chose to do this, because it isn't adding any realism, it's just preventing it. Since you aren't able to fully customize some coaster types, I'm deducting one point from realism. That means it gets 9 out of 10 in realism. Now for optimization. Planet Coaster is really interesting because I wouldn't say it's bad, but it could really use some work. First of all, the game can hardly run on lower end systems, and you basically need a supercomputer to run it at high settings. But even if you have a supercomputer, you're gonna run into some problems. The game will run okay when it's an empty park or you just start a new campaign, but the moment you have a couple hundred peeps or you have a lot of scenery, you're gonna see some FPS drops. This is really unfortunate because once you reach the end of a level, you're going to have to abandon it. No matter what system you have, and no matter your settings, you're gonna have issues when you have a busy park. That's just how the game was made. Combine a busy park with lots of scenery, and you'll be lucky to have over 20 frames per second. Although I make it sound bad, you won't have too many issues in the first couple hours of playing a level. The optimization in this game isn't good, but it isn't bad. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Although Planet Coaster might sound like a perfect game so far, the story changes when it comes to the price category. This game is $45 on Steam. Now that might not sound too bad, but this game isn't exactly overflowing with content. It used to regularly get free content updates, but those have stopped years ago, and now the only new content comes in the form of paid DLC. Now DLC is fine and all, especially since some of these are licensed IPs like Ghostbusters, but if you buy all these, it'll cost more than the actual game itself. If you bought the game and all of the DLCs at full price, you'd be paying over $100. I love this game and all, but it just isn't worth anything close to that price. Maybe $25 or $30? Definitely not $100 plus. That's just outrageous, especially since the game hasn't been touched in years by the developer. There's just no way to justify that price tag, 4 out of 10. With all the scores added up, Planet Coaster gets a 7 out of 10. This lands it into the C rating. This is really a shame, because if it wasn't for the price, this would have been one of the highest rated games on this list. I like this game a lot, and I've spent hundreds of hours playing it but it feels like Frontier doesn't care about it anymore, and the DLCs are just way too expensive. I would 100% recommend this game, but only if you can catch it on sale or something, otherwise it's just too expensive. The next game I'll be rating is No Limits 2. There is a No Limits 1, but it's essentially just an older version of the same game, so I'll be skipping it for now. Now, if you're not a coaster enthusiast like I am, you might not get as much enjoyment out of this game, but personally, I love it. There's no campaign and there's no park management, but it hits all the right bases for me. The realism and the insane attention to detail easily make up for anything the game's missing. Before I go any further, let's get into the categories. Let's start with the Coaster Builder. It's absolutely perfect. It's a lot like the Coaster Builder in Roller Coaster Tycoon World, but improved in every single way. It might take you a little while to learn, but after a couple YouTube tutorials and a couple hours of practice, you'll be good to go. This Coaster Builder creates some of the smoothest coasters and best looking track transitions I've seen in a game. Although it creates smooth coasters by default, you can use external programs like FVD to create even smoother rides. At this point, the level of smoothness isn't even comparable to anything like Planet Coaster or Roller Coaster Tycoon, mainly because this is more comparable to simulation software than an actual game. There are truly no limits when it comes to customizing your coaster. You can make custom supports, custom trains, custom tracks, anything you want. This coaster builder offers so much freedom, it's unlike anything else. Absolutely perfect. 10 out of 10. Now, as for realism, this game sets another perfect example. Now, when I say it's realistic, I don't just mean you can tell the inspiration behind the ride. It literally has the ride's name and the company who manufactured it. 
manufactured it. Not just that, but it has what seems to be almost perfect one-to-one -one models of the actual coaster trains and coaster track. Even little things like wheel bogies, nuts on the track, and brakes have perfect realism and accuracy. Even when you're completely zoomed in on these things, the level of detail is amazing. I've seen comments on YouTube of people thinking the limits to coaster videos are videos of coasters in real life, and personally, I can't blame them for being confused. This game has so much detail and so much realism that it's easy to confuse the two. At times, it looks like something that a 3D animation software produced, rather than a video game. No Limits 2 gets another perfect score in this category, 10 out of 10. Now, for optimization, this game also does a great job. I have a pretty powerful PC, but I've never had anything below 300 FPS in this game, which is pretty impressive. Even if you have an old PC or a laptop, you should be able to run this game with no problems. The optimization isn't perfect, as I've had a couple bugs with cameras drifting, but overall it's still really good. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Finally, we have the price. This is really the game's only weakness. It's $40 on Steam, but it costs an extra $55 to upgrade for the professional license. All this does is remove the watermark when you're recording, and allows you to export videos from the game in a higher resolution. Now, as much as I love this game, I just can't say it's worth the combined $100. I can tell the developers spent a lot of time and effort in this game, and the amount of detail is just amazing, but I still think a price range of $20 to $25 would be a little bit more reasonable. Still, $40 isn't bad. I'll give it 8 out of 10. With all the scores combined, No Limits 2 gets a 9.25 out of 10. This lands it into the A rating, and quite frankly, it really deserves it. I especially recommend it if you're a coaster enthusiast and love making coasters and games. Even if you're not a coaster enthusiast, I'm sure you can have some fun with it. I highly recommend it. The next game I'll be rating is Perkitect. This is such a charming little game. It feels like a love letter to Roller Coaster 1, 2, and 3. It has a lot of the same features, like an isometric camera, a similar coaster builder, and a lot of the tools are the same. Unlike the previous games though, this game has an adorable low poly art style, and has modern UI and controls. Out of all these games, I think it's most similar to Planet Coaster, except there's some things it does better and some things it does worse. Before I go into those, let's get into the categories. First off, let's talk about the coaster builder. As I said, it's pretty much the same coaster builder as Roller Coaster Tycoon 1, 2, and 3 except there's one small difference. In this coaster builder, you can increase or decrease the size of the track section. This is a small feature, but it greatly increases your amount of control. This tiny little feature gives you so much more freedom than the other games. It's really surprising. Although besides that, it kind of is the same coaster builder as the other games. So I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. Now for realism, Parkitect does a great job. It's in the same boat as games like Roller Coaster Tycoon and Planet Coaster. You can easily tell all the inspiration behind the rides. Every ride has its real life counterpart and would have no problem existing in real life. This game does a flawless job, 10 out of 10. This game doesn't have any problems when it comes to optimization either. The low poly art style helps it run on almost any computer, and even if your park's full and full of scenery, you won't see any frame drops. I haven't had any bugs playing this game or run into any bad experiences. Parkitect is optimized very well, 10 out of 10. Finally, we have the price. Parkitect is $30 on Steam. I think this price is a little high, and something like $20 would be more reasonable, but it still isn't a bad price. Unlike Planet Coaster, this game actually regularly gets free content updates. There are some paid DLCs, but it's nothing too expensive. Even if you don't have the DLCs, you'll still get free content updates, and the game's already filled with content, so there's no big issue. I still think the price is a little high, so I'll deduct one point. I'll give it 9 out of 10. With all the scores added up, Parkitect gets 9.13 out of 10. This lands it into the A rating, and this game really deserves it. Whether or not you're a coaster enthusiast, you're gonna love this game. It's a full package, and it isn't just about the roller coasters. No matter who you are, you're gonna love this game. I highly recommend it. The final game I'll be ranking is Theme Park Tycoon 2. This is a free game on Roblox.com. I only heard about it about 3 months ago, but since then I've grown quite fond of it. Now it's obviously going to be less polished than the other paid games on this list, but it still has a lot of good aspects. Speaking of which, let's dive straight into the categories. Let's start with the Coaster Builder. Now for a Roblox game, this Coaster Builder is incredibly impressive. It has lots of similarities to the one in Planet Coaster, which means it also comes with some of the same problems. Although it's really simple to learn and easy to use, the track transitions still aren't the best, and it's generally not too great. Overall, it's still really impressive for a Roblox game. I'll give it the same score I gave the one in Planet Coaster, 8 out of 10. Now, let's talk about realism. This game does a pretty good job. You can tell the developer behind it has clear inspiration. You also have to keep in mind though that most Roblox games are meant to be played on laptops or tablets, so there's not too much detail that can be included in the ride models. Due to this, the game loses some realism because it's hard to understand what some rides are supposed to be. Nonetheless, the inspiration is clear. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Now we have optimization. Like I said before, most Roblox games can be played on laptops or tablets, so they're not too demanding. I've had no problems with this game on my gaming PC, and I'm sure it'll be fine on laptops or tablets too. Perfect score, 10 out of 10. 
Finally, we have the price. I don't think I need to say anything other than the fact that the game is free. There are some paid features within the game, but all those are completely optional. Like most other games on Roblox, Theme Park Tycoon 2 is mostly free. Perfect score, 10 out of 10. With all the scores added up, Theme Park Tycoon 2 gets a score of 9.25 out of 10. This lands it into the A rating, and if you have a Roblox account, I highly recommend this game. It's completely free, and it's a lot of fun. Some people think Roblox is only a kid's game, but no matter your age, you're able to enjoy Theme Park Tycoon 2. I highly recommend it. Now that we have our final game ranked, here's where all the games stand. If you think any of the games deserve to be higher or lower, let me know in the comments. Other than that, if you enjoyed watching, make sure to stick around. I make lots of No Limits 2 videos, and I have a lot more coming. Like always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.